Standing out at 26 in Cal at the criminal courts the other day for the Jason Van Dyke trial, and with the Kavanaugh hearings on the alleged sexual assault from 36 years ago going on in Washington, I thought about a word that gets a lot of use. Justice. Activists like William Calloway use it. Prosecutors use it. Defense lawyers. The left uses it. The right uses it. Justice. Then I got to thinking, oddly, about a guy most of you have never heard of. Or if you've heard of him, you've probably forgotten him. Gary Dotson. And in 1977, the skinny little white kid was accused of raping a young girl. Her name was Kathleen Crowell Webb. She was a great witness. She was believable. And in 1979... Gary Dotson was sentenced to 25 to 50 years in prison for rape. A skinny little white boy went to prison, and the world forgot about him. But about six years later, the woman who said she was raped, Kathleen Corral Webb, recanted her story. It was huge news. She made it up, she said, because she had sex with her boyfriend, and she was worried that she was pregnant. And she pointed Gary Dotson out as a rapist. The whole thing became a circus. Governor Thompson, remember Big Jim Thompson? He held a hearing, three days on television, a national crime drama. These were in the days before cameras were allowed in court, so this was like a court or a Senate hearing. He even projected her underwear on a giant screen, and Thompson questioned Dotson about prison life about drinking and making pruno. The whole thing was ridiculous. It turned out that the DNA evidence was wrong, but then State's Attorney Rich Daly was fighting it. A judge tossed it, ordered a new trial. Daly dropped the whole thing. Dotson was free. The big CBS morning show on TV at the time, was the host was Phyllis George. Remember her? Anybody? Phyllis George had Webb and Dotson on her show in 1985. The show was with Chicago's own Bill Curtis. And she asked the two of them, how about a hug? Dotson refused. Webb refused. Critics and viewers were angry. George's career was finished. Curtis left the network and came back home to Chicago. It's a story that we don't want to tell now. Because there were, there were stories about how unreliable eyewitnesses were then, even victims back then. But we don't tell those stories now, do we? Kathleen Crowell Webb died a few years ago of cancer. I don't know what happened to Gary Dotson. Last time I heard, he was in and out of jail. Justice. Jeff Carlin is here, my buddy and executive producer of The Rocon Show. And our guest... Tribune award-winning cartoonist Scott Stannis, and also podcaster of Prickly City. We'll talk Kavanaugh and whether the amazing events over the past few days will serve as another deplorables moment. And I'm John Cass, husband, father, beloved mayoral candidate, and syndicated columnist for the Chicago Tribune. And you, you know where you are, don't you? You're on the Chicago way. On WGN Plus. In a tower by the river, there lived a man. Castle. There was a man who took a stand with pen and paper in his hand, defeating foes in every ward with a pen more mighty than the sword. No escape from his ink lasso. In a tower by the river, Castle. Here's how you get him. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way. Okay, everybody. John Cass, Jeff Carlin, Scott Stannis. How are things, gentlemen? 